Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. You may or may not realize it, but when you were young, you have been receiving dividends from your relatives every year, and it comes in little red packets called Ang Bao. Remember the fun times you received all those free money? Me too. But if you get married, you will no longer receive dividends from your relatives. Instead, you have to start giving them out. <sighs> what if I told you that you can relieve your happy childhood days of receiving free money? All you need to do is just invest in dividend stocks to receive quarterly unbounds, just like the good old days. All those aside, dividend investing is a great way to get free money from companies. And in this video, I'll be talking everything you need to know about dividends. What are dividends? Why do companies pay dividends? How do you qualify for dividends? And whether you should invest in dividend stocks? So let's first start by what are dividends? As you may know already, company pays out dividends to their shareholders. But not all companies pay dividends. To know whether the company pays dividends or not, it is pretty simple. Just go to Google, search for the stock, like Maple Tree Logistics stock. If that company has a dividend yield, it is a dividend paying company. But if the company doesn't pay dividends like Tesla, the dividend yield will be empty. The dividends may not always be cash. Sometimes, company pays dividends in the form of stocks called script dividends. Instead of receiving cash, you will be receiving more stocks and often at a discount from the market price. So that's what a dividend is. But why do companies pay dividends? On earnings day, which is also a happy day for every investor, the company will be declaring how much everyone will be getting. Like, you get a dividend, you get a dividend, everyone gets a dividend. But if you are married, you will know the feeling of giving unbounds to your relative kids when they come visit you. Ha, <laughs> my IE with 5 kids are coming for my unbounds. I will never financially recover from this. So isn't giving out free money bad for the company? Like, if I give you guys money, I will have less money to use law. Now, there's a few reasons why company pays dividends. And the first one is to reward shareholders. According to most online articles, company pays dividends to reward their shareholders. But you may be like, why they so good give free money when I have also thought about this for a while. And I finally realized the reason. Think for a while, who are the shareholders of the company? Investors like us and... Yup, you are right, the management of the company. So when the company pays dividends, they are also paying themselves. They are like, ni ike dividend, ta ike dividend, wo ike dividend oh. And it is totally fine, right? This is legal because both the management and the investors are the shareholders of the company. And because of this, both the investors' interests and the management's interests are aligned. Both of us want the company to do well so that we will receive more dividends. The only difference is they are doing all the hard work while we are at home playing Mobile Legends Bang Bang and helping to tap the like button to help support the channel. The second reason why company pays dividends is that they have too much cash. They are like, I yeah, I earn too much this quarter. Hmm, I know, let me give up all this money for free. You ever have that feeling too? Neither do I, but I know someone else who have this feeling. Generally, mature companies with stable earnings will choose to pay dividends. For example, DBS, Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, and so on. That's because the bigger they are, the slower they will grow. And actually, it is riskier for them to continue a high-level growth. As a result, they don't have a good way to use the money to grow themselves. So instead, they rather pay out the money to shareholders instead of keeping it. On the other hand, fast-growing companies prefer to distribute lesser dividends or not distribute anything at all because they are able to reinvest the money in themselves to grow themselves faster. To visualize this, let's take a look at a mature company like Coca-Cola. They pay dividends and their gross profit is actually very stable throughout the years. Meanwhile, Tesla do not pay dividends but instead reinvest heavily in themselves like researching new technologies and building new factories to produce more cars. This is Tesla's gross profit, which is increasing steadily. And it is the same for most technology companies like Apple, which only pays 0.72% dividend. It's not because they are stingy, it's because they know that if they reinvest in themselves, they can continue growing their gross profit. The third reason why company pays dividends is to signify strength. Once a company starts paying dividends, they will try their best to continue paying dividends. It's like if your uncle gives you $5 ang pao last year, and he gives you $2 this year, you'll be like, huh, why this is so little one? It's the same for companies. Even if their earnings drop, their dividends do not drop as much. It is to show shareholders that the company is confident in its future despite the current financial issues. In a study by Dr. Ian Mortimer and Matthew Page titled Why Dividends Matter, it was found out that during recessions, dividends do not drop as much as earnings. For example, in 1973 to 1975 recession, Earnings per share dropped by 15%, but dividends per share dropped by only 1%. 
Even during the 2007 to 2009 recession, when earnings per share dropped so much, dividends per share only dropped by 24%. However, if not done carefully, this might end up hurting the company instead. In the past, some companies went so far as to borrow money to pay dividends. If that happens, avoid those kind of companies like a plague because dividends should be sustainable. It should come from profits and not from debt. So those were a few reasons why a company pays dividends. But how do you qualify for dividends? First step is to buy dividend stocks lah, abu then. As long as you are holding dividend stocks on certain dates, you will receive dividends. Let me explain. The first date is the announcement date. On this date, the company tells everyone, lie lie lie, we are going to give up dividends. Typically, it's the same date as the earnings date. They will tell shareholders how much they'll be getting and when they'll be getting it. Which brings us to the second date, come dividend date. And no, it's not the come that you guys are thinking. Don't naughty naughty ah. In this case, come means combined with. So come dividend date means with dividends. As long as you own the stocks on come dividend date, the dividends will come. The third date is the S dividend date. If you buy the stocks on or after the S dividend date, you will not receive any dividends. And if you already own a stock before the S dividend date and you sell on or after the S dividend date, you will still qualify for the dividends. Now on S dividend date, because the stock no longer has the value of the dividend, the stock price will drop by the dividend amount. So if the company gives out 20 cent dividends, the stock price will drop by 20 cent. Next, on record date, the company will check its records to see who are the shareholders of the company. If you own the stocks on the come dividend date, you will be considered as the shareholder of the company and you will receive the dividends on the payment date. So let's look at the real world example, OCBC. On 7 August, OCBC announced that it will be paying 15.9 cents of dividends per share. So you will be getting $0.159. Next, the S dividend date is on 21st August. If you want to get the dividends, you need to own the share one day before the S dividend date or 20th August. If you buy on 21st August, you won't get any dividends. Finally, you will receive the dividends on 7 October. Now, some of you clever people will think, A, if like that, I just need to buy the stock one day before the S dividend date and sell on the S dividend date, then I will get free money law. Yes, you are right. In theory, this strategy works very well. But in reality, this strategy is useless. It's like you think the Naruto run is very cool and will reduce air resistance. But when you try it in real life, not only it doesn't work, but you look like an idiot. This strategy doesn't work because as mentioned earlier, on the S dividend date, the stock price will drop by the dividend amount. So it kind of cancel out the effect of receiving dividends. And second, because many investors think the exact same thing, they will buy in before the S dividend date. This causes the price to go up before the S dividend date and drop right on the S dividend date because many investors will sell away the stock. For example, this is OCBC. At the bottom, D means S dividend date. You will usually see the stock price increasing before the date and drop right on the S dividend date. Another example, S dividend on 22 May. Stock price increasing before that, then drop on 22 May. So it's kind of useless to time the dividend dates. The best way is to buy and hold the dividend stocks. By the way, if you are interested to invest in dividend companies, I've already done a video to give you a quick and easy way to find dividend companies. Just check out this video up here. Now that you know more about dividend stocks, the next question is, should I invest in dividend stocks? This is a very important question that you have to think about. Investing in dividend companies will give you a steady passive income stream. With that money, you can go buy Papao Cha or live on some exotic beach. However, as mentioned earlier, companies that pay dividends are mostly mature companies that cannot grow quickly. And companies that do not pay dividends are mostly growth companies that are still in their growth stage. So let's take Johnson & Johnson for example, because I like the smell of Johnson & Johnson strawberry shampoo. For the past 5 years, the stock price went from $100 to $150.10. Let's also assume the dividend yield is 2.69% for the past 5 years. So let's calculate this. If you have invested $1,000 in this company 5 years ago, you will get a capital appreciation of $501 and you will receive a total of $134 in dividends. So our total return is $635. Now let's look at a growth company like maybe Amazon. The company does not pay any dividends, but the stock price went from $600 all the way to $3,230. If you have invested $1,000, your total return is $4,380. As you can see, investing in growth companies will give you a higher return over the long term. So back to the initial question, should you invest in dividend stocks? This can be asked in another way. Do you want a steady income but lower return? Or are you okay with no steady income 
but you want a higher return over the long term? This will be different for everyone. I won't know which is better for you, but here is my own plan. Right now, I feel that I do not need the dividend money. Like sure, I can receive $10, $20 every once in a while and reinvest it back. Compounding interest, right? However, no matter how much you try to compound, it will never grow as fast as a growth company. Like Tencent, Google, Amazon, Tesla, Square, you can easily 2x to even 10x your money by investing in them. However, there's a downside to this. The growth is not guaranteed. Like, there are many things that can go wrong. The company may be cheating investors by rolling a prototype down the hill or they are unable to execute the plan properly. Like, before Tesla became successful, they almost went bankrupt. So, if you want a higher growth, you need to have a higher risk. Back to my plan, as I do not need the dividends now, I rather invest in growth stocks to grow my money much faster. Then, when nearing retirement in my 50s, I would prefer to have a more stable passive income instead. Because when I retire, I will not have any income, right? In that case, I will convert most of my growth stocks into dividend stocks to give me a stable income. On top of that, I will have the extra benefit of lesser risk. No AMA or APEC will be happy to see their stock drop by 50% during retirement. It will be bad for their health. All in all, this is my plan. Growth stocks now, dividend stocks later. It may be different for everyone. Some people prefer a stable income source now, while some people prefer to grow their stocks faster now. Comment down below and let me know which you prefer stable income or higher growth. So, hopefully, this video helps you understand a little more on how dividends work. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. See ya!